Right, yeah, let's let's get started. Yeah, welcome everyone. Thanks for turning up to another ACF Chat Fridays. Um, I think this is our third now, which is good. We're we're keeping rolling and people keep turning up, so I, th I would take that as a good sign. Um, just a quick bit of housekeeping. Probably first thing to say is we're actually recording this session this week. We haven't done the previous two. We've had a lot of people sort of say, I can't make it. I'd really like to catch up with some questions and, and work out what you guys are talking about. So we're recording this one just to see, you know, if, if we can, where we can put it and if it's going to help people. So, yeah, just thought I'd call that out quite early on. Um, uh, and again, as last time, I'm Ian Paulson, the product manager for ACF. Um, we're doing this regular Friday chat every other Friday. Um, We've scheduled it again for 45 minutes this session. And next time, which is, I think, I believe it's the 17th, we're going to do it a slightly later time um, to try and make it a bit more time zone friendly for people. So what time are we doing it? We're doing it at 9 p.m. UK time, which is 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, we'll, we'll make it clear on the uh, on, on Twitter when we announce it so it'll, everybody else can figure out the time zones. But hopefully that works a little bit better for people. And if other times work better then please let us know and we can try and work around it so as always we've got a number of the acf folks in the chat today and handy zoom background custom made um you can identify who they are they are liam gladdy matt shaw um we've got dale williams who's the designer uh we've also got damon cook who works on the devrel team as well hey everyone um if i've missed anyone we probably should have some of the other guys probably turning up as well um, Damon didn't get the memo about the background though sorry that's fine. It's good. It's all good. The one thing actually that's quite exciting. So I don't know if anyone knows or have heard about the talk mags. They do a the talk mag does a yearly plugin madness, kind of like a crazy bracket style competition between WordPress plugins. And it's I think it's this week is the first week it's opened up for voting. And ACF is on the it's on the on the roster. It's in the brackets ready to be to be voted so i'll just drop the link in the chat there so please just go and vote for acf if you've got a chance like go and uh, go and hit the vote button um dan sound are you everyone else can hear me right yeah good cool dan it might be an issue on your your end um so yeah go ahead vote for acf that'd be good and then today we're talking about what's coming in acf 6.1 um, we've been working hard on 6.1 for, for quite a long time. And the big ticket feature for 6.1 is custom post type and custom taxonomy registration, all within ACF in a kind of a joined up workflow that allows you to register post types, create fields for those post types, um, and just kind of take that all into the ACF plugin world to make it um, super easy instead of having to register stuff with code or use another plugin um, and kind of centralize your developer uh, journey to building out sites where you need the data model and you need to create data structures of post types, taxonomies and fields. It kind of all makes sense in the one place. Um, so today we've got a demo from Liam, who's going to be sort of walking through what we've got um, coming down the pipe for 6.1. We're also going to be running the, um, we'll be running the Q&A as we have done kind of in the background. So that is a uh, an option in Zoom. If you're running on perhaps uh, more of a later version of Zoom, you'll see the Q&A button um, just to the right of the share screen or chat buttons. So if you open that up, we can we'll take questions. We can the team will answer them hopefully in like in the chat or in the Q&A. And if we've got time afterwards, we can maybe talk about some stuff as well. So yeah, uh, what else? There is a poll that I'll try and actually start on time this time. If you've come the last couple of times, same question, but there's also another one um, just around getting to know how people currently do CPTs and how they register custom post types. So I'm just going to launch that now and we'll share that at the end. We can well, hopefully I'll remember again. So good question, Lucas. We can answer that as well. Liam, are you good to go? Should we hand it over to you? Yeah, yeah I think so. Uh, I can I'll start with Lucas's question, actually, which is... Uh... Yes, we're working with Conrad on what that looks like because we, we're still figuring out how we're going to import or what, what import we can support on this stuff. But yeah, Conrad's on board. 
uh, he has the build that I'm about to show you. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, we'll have more info on that in the next week or two, I, I imagine. Uh, so let me share my screen. Hopefully you can all see that. Let me open the chat as well so I can uh, answer any, any messages that come in live. Cool. So this is, uh, this is the build we're, we're calling ACF 6.1 Alpha 1. Uh, it's actually available in your account right now. If you want to go download it, um, but wait until I've demoed it first. Um, and uh, yeah, this is our kind of first pass at the CPTs and taxonomies. It's in a pretty good place, to be honest with you. Um, we, we definitely got further along than we did because it was one of those things where everything sort of came together quite late. So we'll probably quite quickly move into uh, move into into beta. Yeah, I can, John. Let me do that. Probably, I, is that, does that work better? Yeah, that's great, thanks. Cool, no worries. Uh, so the first thing to notice is uh, we have changed the menu bar. I know that might be uh, that might be controversial to some folks that this always said custom fields before, but it kind of didn't make sense to, for it to stay like that, right? With the, now we've got post types and taxonomies in here as well. Um, but yeah, post types and taxonomies is here. Um, there's no add new button anymore because obviously we don't know what you want to add new of, uh, but there's the add new button at the top. So if you, if you just want to stick to field groups, um, the first thing to say is you can turn post tax and taxonomies off. If you're one of those folks that just wants to write code, um, that's all documented in the, uh, in the, the GitHub issue where it will publish as soon as I finish talking that kind of runs you through everything. Uh, but yeah, if I hop into post types, you see our, our kind of 6.1 style. UI here that, that Dale designed so beautifully for us. Um, and we can just go into add new post type. Uh, I've zoomed in a bit, so this is going to look a bit more kind of spaced out than, than it will do for you guys. So don't worry about that too much. Uh, but you get this kind of, um, introduction screen that gives you just the basics, right? Cause there, there's some people that just don't really care about all the advanced options, uh, especially, yeah, especially if you're working in the headless world, then you probably don't, you just want to create the, the minimal stuff to get everything working. Uh, but you can toggle the advanced configuration and then you get everything that you would, you would expect, including my, uh, my additional settings here. Don't worry about that. I'll explain that a bit more in future. That won't be there for you guys. Um, so I can go in and fill in my label. I'm going to do location and locations. We fill in the type key, like you'd expect on, on fields. Uh, whether it's public and whether it's hierarchical, the word that nobody on the ACF team can say properly. So I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed I nailed it first time there. <laughs> uh, you can link taxonomies directly like you were, like you would in code. Um, and we've got every, all the support options that you'd expect from the, from the post type. Um, yeah. And description, same as, as you expect from, from ACF. Labels we filled in automatically for you. Uh, based on what you've typed in up here, uh, we are going to add a button here to regenerate this because I can I can tell you now that if you typo in here and you tab out and we generate all the labels, then we won't replace anything that's already set. But that's annoyed me enough during during <laughs> during alpha um, that we've uh, we've got that plan to fix before we release the beta. Uh, you kind of it's 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 basically every option you could you want here most of them you're probably not going to want to touch or worry about. Okay, cool. I'll let the folks asking questions in chat. I'll let the rest of the team handle them. Uh, yeah. So labels is all logical. Uh, it's the standard kind of ACF flow here that, you know, if you, if you turn something off that disables conditional logic, essentially, which is what these things are in WordPress, then you won't see the options for them. Uh, things like menu icon, you can, uh, add a, at a dash icon class, we're going to work on this UI as well before we get into beta. So you can, you know, pick more details there rather than just having to type in a class. Cause obviously that's not, not the best, uh, permissions, whether you can export it, um, in ACF, uh, the, this version is, so the, today's build is ACF pro only just because it's easier for us to build that, but on release, it will be available to free and pro users. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing new in here. You're saying is pro only, so don't worry about that. Uh, 
permalinks, all the options that you'd expect from, from permalinks. I'm not going to fill anything in here because I'll break something because I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, and the REST API, even, even down to REST controller classes, realistically, not many people are going to use that, but it's there, right? It's, uh, it's there if you want to use it. Um, and the new feature coming in 6.1 is the ability to add tabs to, to anywhere that we're using our new 6.0 tab layout. So that is advanced settings in post types and taxonomies or in the field group settings or in the fields themselves. Um, I can demo that quickly at the end. So if I save that, you see we get locations up here in the sidebar here. Um, I can click link existing field groups and link my field group that I created earlier. And now if I create a new location, you see, I get the, uh, the field group that I set that lets me pick a map. Uh, taxonomies works basically the same way. So if I add a region, regions, this time I'll actually link it to locations. Uh, that's configuration as well. So we've got the tab there. This is all the, all the default things you expect labels there, same as visibility and, and permalinks and all the options you'd expect. Uh, we save that there and then regions is here. Some locations I created earlier, but you'll see that the, the field group is, is in here. Yeah, Mike. So, so GraphQL will have support. They're the, uh, they're the reason we actually added that tab. It was their biggest feature request. So, uh, as soon as Jason gets his hold of this build um, today, he can uh, he can start implementing that. But yeah, we we know that they're going to add that tab pretty quickly after release, maybe even in sync with us. So we'll have that up and running. Uh, so we can uh, we can export just like any, anything else. You can even generate PHP, uh, and we'll generate you the uh, the raw WordPress PHP rather than anything ACF. So that if you you know if you want to export your post types and taxonomies and drop it in as code. If you then disable ACF, we don't want to hold you back from, from breaking that stuff. So, uh, yeah, we give you the, the raw WordPress PHP, or you can export it as JSON and you get the, the default JSON that you're expecting. Uh, you can add field groups as well to that. So you can kind of export everything ACF in one, if you want. Uh, yeah. Anything else, anything else I'm missing here? Ian, Matt, anything? No. Nope. It's a it's it's a really relatively basic thing to demo, really, because it just works like you'd expect it to work in the ACF way. There's obviously filters all along the stack, and if you want to add, uh, you know, if you want to edit anything that gets uh, registered to WordPress, all that kind of stuff is is there as filters. Um, let me show you the field groups. I guess the uh, the new tabs here. So I've got a custom setting there. Um, and the same down here in the settings. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Any questions? So if you, if you use the register, uh, if you use our export code, then it won't appear in the WordPress UI, uh, in the ACF UI at all, uh, because it would just behave like as if you'd registered it in code. And, and just to pick up a question Mike Ellis asked in the chat, um, the high level question about why we're bringing it into ACF. Uh, and I, I've specifically answered the question around, we, we would like to make more things in the UI, like you've got options pages. If you're using the pro plugin, historically, you've got to register the options page in code. And, you know, it, it's a good way of doing it for some, but not for others. So we want to bring that into the UI. Um, Custom post types has always been something that obviously people do use plugins to use, but they're just purely using it for that, that only that purpose. And because if you've got ACF builders, it's so intrinsically tied together that it makes sense to, for, for our point of view, um, to, to bring it into the flow and, and have that journey. Because as you saw when Liam added that post type, you, the green notice gives you the ability to go and do the next thing you would typically do, which is either create new fields for that post type, kind of the, the next um, logical thing you do, or maybe exist, add an existing field group, like connect it together or go and register a new taxonomy. So this whole building out the site, the data for the site, 
is so tied together with fields and and uh, post types. So it just kind of made sense for us. It's been on a roadmap for a while. You know, it'd been a heavily requested feature from ACF users um, when we first took over at Delicious Brains. Uh, and I think there is a case for just removing the need for extra plugins if the plugin that is almost um, fundamental to the site kind of next to WordPress itself, but ACF is there, it's it's underpins the site, then why not bring that responsibility into ACF and then you don't need another plugin, you don't need to worry about that being updated. Um, so yeah. And, and of course, it, it also links in with things like Atlas, things like Headless. So if you're registering post types in code, but you want to build the headless site, you, you want to kind of do stuff within the UI. Um, you don't want to be get diving into PHP if, if you're building, you know, you might have a, a headless sort of developers that aren't that familiar with WordPress. So having it in the code is kind of, or not so good, um, which is why we're trying to bring it into the UI. Uh, the question about whether if you create a, a post typing code also in the UI, would there be some validation on save in the UI? Uh, so that validation for fields would come from ACF's standard field implementation. Um, so yeah, absolutely. If you register it in code and attach ACF fields to it, then it would it would validate with whatever settings you've got uh, refer yeah, saved for the fields. Um, and Eagle asks how we're going to interact with CPT UI and Jet Engine and their post type implementation. Uh, it's our intention to try and get some sort of smart import for folks that want to use ACF instead of those plugins. Uh, we're, we're investigating that now. We're not sure how fully featured that's going to be in time for the release of the first build of this. Um, but it would be nice if, you know, if we can just give you a one click import. Uh, Nick's question, when will 6.1 go live? Oh, good question. And what are we saying there, Ian? Yeah, I mean, it's a tough one. We don't, we don't try and sort of pin ourselves down to deadlines, but we, you know, we're working hard. Um, there's a lot of activity this month for sure. You know, the, the alpha version is, is going out or is out today. We're hoping to be getting into a, a beta release in the next couple of weeks, and then there'll be release candidates. So, you know, it's going to be a, a matter of, yeah. I, I'd, I'd like to think it would be before April, but, I you know, again, I would not like to commit to anything because things happen. The biggest thing and the biggest sort of potential roadblock for us on the horizon is because how tied we are to WordPress core when it comes to the ACF blocks piece within ACF. So we've already seen the WordPress 6.2 um, beta 2 that came out that kind of threw a spanner in the works at how our ACF blocks editing um, worked. And we had to... We had to kind of swarm on that issue and and Liam talked to the, the the core contributors to try and figure out a path forward and in the end they reverted their change but that kind of thing can push out timescales and timelines so I don't really want to you know commit too much to stuff there but yeah it's 6.1 is is the big thing we're all focusing on right now uh oh uh yeah absolutely you'll see this is running on 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 WordPress uh 6.2 beta 4. It's also running on PHP 8.2, uh, which we, you know, obviously we had to wait for WordPress to bring that support uh, before we could support it. Just due to the number of warnings, it was impossible to tell what was our, what was our things we need to improve and what was WordPress's. So now that they support it, we, uh, we can as well. Um, and we intend to, to ship that. I mean, that kind of gives you an idea of our hopeful date for, for, uh, for ACF 6.1. It would be nice to ship that alongside WordPress 6.2. Christoph, yeah, your question about uh, saving uh, JSON locations to a different place than the theme folder. Absolutely. That's a, it's, we know it's a big feature request. It won't be coming in 6.1, but it, it's certainly on our, our high up on our to-do list. Um, we think it's a, actually a relatively simple thing to change. I know there's, there's already plugins to do it. ACFE lets you change the, the storage location of things. Cool. Right, I'll stop screen sharing and uh, we'll go back. I can always hop back in if we need to. Yeah, thanks, Liam. That's no good. worries. We uh, there's a lot of questions in uh, in chat as well as the the 
was kind of not using the Q and A this week, I guess. Yeah, it's so hard not to use just naturally yeah, use the chat, fine. isn't it? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we weren't missing questions in the Q and A, but I think we have already answered the time frame release. So yeah, might, at least Zoom has done. threaded replies now in the chat. That makes it a lot easier. Um, but yeah, Ross Berenson, you've asked if Gutenberg, with Gutenberg being more React, and are the plans for ACF to eventually become React components um, to make coding blocks via React? That is something we're looking at, isn't it? Because we we've, we've had um, a few requests from people who are they're building sites that the front end is built in React, and, and that may be a headless site, it may be something else, but it's not a PHP template um, for the front end. And if they're using ACF blocks to to make the editor or editing experience even better, then they still need to make the PHP version of that template to make it render in the editor, which isn't ideal. So we are looking at that um, in the future. Is that something Ross you're you're doing? Is that like w would you vote for that on our, our roadmap, or is this just a kind of a what if question? Feel free to unmute as well, or in the chat is fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, I will say, Ross, we've actually we've got some kind of, we've we've got some actual builds kind of around what that can look like, and and basically we, we the end goal there is to give you a, a single React component that you can render in your headless site and the WordPress backend, and we just pass you the data the same way that you know something like Faust JS or yeah any of the other headless libraries would do. So yeah, we're we're, we're definitely exploring that. That's more for the preview side. Uh, we we still got to do a lot of work around the editing experience, obviously, with, with the changes that WordPress are bringing at some point soon. Um, things like our date picker being jQuery and things like that aren't aren't sustainable for the future. So we're likely going to have to figure something out in React for those. Um, obviously, WordPress already has all the UI components, so there might have to be yeah a, a change from how WordPress, or oh, sorry, rather than how ACF does it in the classic editor, where you're used to those jQuery date pickers and things like that. So if you're in the block editor, then you get the WordPress experience. Um, but yeah, decisions on that kind of stuff is, is what we'll be playing with over the next few months and seeing how we get on. I'm just noting down some of the, the votes for these things that we've got on the roadmap, like the multiple JSON um, directories and Ross, your point on um, the components. What else have we got going on? There's a repeat pagination question, Matt, that Akash has asked. <laughs> the, the drag and drop um functionality of the repeater when you reorder things that's unfortunately due to the nature of the pagination setting that's disabled um because you can't really as, as you've said you can't drag an item from page five to page one um so that that's the downside of uh, turning on the repeater pagination setting but you know the the benefits of that um setting are kind of quite high if you've got a large amount of data in a repeater there is there isn't any there is still a way to reorder things because uh we kind of allow you to edit an order number so if you've you're on page five and it's you know item number 201 you can edit that and change it to item number five and it will go to the first page on save so it's not the best user experience for reordering things but it's the the ability to paginate and and handle large amounts of data is kind of out, outweighing that and i think that's you know the the best we can get with the repeater field in the state it is at the moment what have we got We got a question from Earl. I'll, I'll come back to that shortly. I'm just uh, passing it and looking at something here. I know that's one for me though. Deep, deep blocks info. Yeah, Martin, you've asked about the public roadmap. 
yeah, we, we did we did talk about this either in the first one or the last one. Uh, there's a couple of things because we, you know, we're, we're finding our feet really in a way because we've, and I, I say that sort of, I feel bad saying that because obviously we've been in, we've been part of ACF for a while, but as Delicious Brains, when we took it on from, from Elliot, there's a huge backlog of stuff and there's a huge things we wanted to do, those things that were in flight that we needed to continue and finish. Um, and then obviously come to WP Engine, there's things we also need to sort of look at from a priority point of view. Um, but we've also never had just that whole backlog that we could either look at publicly or, you know, or, or work with internally. So we're building that up internally first before we can then potentially show everyone. Um, I think at the moment, because we've got all these channels of, of um, collecting information from you guys is like there's the support forum there's the um the email support there's twitter there's these meetings like we're trying to get everything and and collate it and try and make sure we're um recording like all of the votes for these types of issues so there's there's a lot obviously there's a lot of channels right now and i think maybe if we just had the one roadmap that would be easier but it would also be more tricky we've got a load of products within wp engine that if we did one for one, we'd have to do for the other. So it's not just a decision that we as ACF want to make at this point in time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm hoping, Martin, I know you, you, thank you for all your GitHub kind of um, the issues you've raised and the things you've tested, the things you've flagged. And I hope you see we've obviously been quite reactive and, and helpful and there's been that communication. So even though there's not the public roadmap, but there are the multiple ways of contacting us, I hope we're become, you know, we're showing that we're, um available and we can we can sort of help where there is need for you know either noting down feature requests or working out bugs or you know so yeah sorry it's not the best answer right now because i know that's what you want but we'll get there hopefully to in in some way liam just dropped in the link for the alpha release yeah, sorry, that's what I was working on. And we, we've had it all prepared, but I obviously like, couldn't publish it until we, we started talking about it here. So, Yeah, that's the ultimate live coding, right? Because you're not just doing a demo, <laughs> you're like live deploying. That just seems a bit risky, but we've done it anyway. Yeah. But, and yeah, Earl, thanks for that feedback. That's nice to hear because obviously you gave us good feedback in the first chat Friday where we talk, where you talked about how it, it seemed like maybe from people you'd spoken to, that things have gone a bit quiet, maybe since the WP Engine acquisition. And obviously that's not not true from our side. So we're trying to be louder, more responsive and more, you know, just trying to open up more dialogue. So hopefully, yeah, that's that's coming across. Do you, uh, Liam, do you want to go back to Earl's block question at some point? Uh, yeah, two seconds. Uh, I can expand on Martin as well, actually. Just, I just want to say, Martin, I know we, um, obviously, you've, you've seen, we have to be quite reactive to the WordPress changes, right? So that kind of makes figuring out our plans more difficult because we we, you know, we don't really know until things get merged into Gutenberg or the actual release how it's going to affect us. Um, and you, we also get bugs and things that you know, we think might be an issue and then they end up being resolved, as you saw with the fix that was only an issue in in the Gutenberg plugin and and wasn't wasn't a problem in in production. Uh, okay, Earl, your question. Sorry, it took so long to get to you. Is this um is this an issue like on page load or when you edit something about the block? Because in theory, we shouldn't be calling the fetch block command on page load. We, that, all that should be rendered by WordPress as part of the kind of preload is what it's called. Um, and then that gets rendered live in the front end uh, on refresh. And so you, we should only be updating blocks individually as each block is changed. Now, if you've got a single block with an awful lot of fields, then that might still be, that might still be a problem for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's me use case. So when the, when the page loads and once the block is like once I click it and it loads everything, I can use it without a problem. I can update it without a problem. But it's that very first time you go into the page, you click it and it fetches the block. Um, it just seems like certainly when we're sending it, it seems like there's a lot of stuff that we could probably just send and fetch um, 
on the backside. And then the biggest problem is when it comes back, it runs, um, I, I put the wrong function name, but it's WP JSON encode. Um, it's in the core function for WP send JSON. Um, and one of my blocks in particular, uh, where it ran out of memory, it was trying to send back like a 16.4 megabyte uh, JSON encoded payload because um, it's all, you know, all the markup and everything. I just wonder yeah. if there's an opportunity to like send back a little more, either send back it more succinct or even like load it on the page load to where um, we don't have to send back JSON encoded through an AJAX call, which is having some issues. Yeah, no, that's definitely a fair enough call out, right? Part of the reason we do that is because that edit view is the same in blocks as it is in the classic editor. And we use the exact same rendering functions as we do uh, to give you that consistent experience. That's one of the things I was talking about earlier. Like if we, if we are going to move to the move towards the kind of WordPress way of doing things with their React components, which obviously makes sense, then we won't need to do that. Um, and, it, and it's kind of like a, it's a catch 22, right? Because we want to give people the experience that they're used to, which is, you know, the classic editor. And that's kind of the whole point of ACF blocks, right? We try to bridge that gap and make people, people feel at home in the, uh, in the Gutenberg editor. Um, so yeah, absolutely R scope for improvement there. Uh, we can do better and, uh, yeah, hopefully we will in the, in the next few months. I was just replying to Nick's question about storing ACF data in custom database tables. And just just for everyone, there is a plug in it. Like ACF is great because there's a plug in for everything for ACF. And there's already like a plug in that does uh, that takes data instead of storing it in post meta, but storing it in custom database tables. So that's that's I've dropped the link in the response to Nick there in the chat. But so that's something that exists already. But it is on our roadmap to, to explore how that would look like in core, but there's no firm timescales. Uh, and then also, I meant to go, sorry, just to say, Nick, you, what's your, um, what, you're asking about the custom tables. Is that for performance or just for the, you know, the sake of, of a clean uh, post matter table? Because uh, we've done a lot of, uh, a lot of support, a lot of, sorry, a lot of testing on this. And we, we've actually found that there isn't that much benefit. In, in some cases, it's actually significantly worse to move ACF data into custom tables. Um, there. There's obviously some some quirks of that. Obviously, the way we we use a separate uh, meta field, uh, meta key for each thing, uh, for each field. Sorry, then yeah, that's something we can improve. And uh, I know ACFE is working on something there. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll end up with a, a solution similar to that, so that you can still do everything exactly the same way. Um, people want to you know, if you've got an ACF site that's been developed in you know, five years ago, you don't want to go back to have to deal with the fact that your, your, your custom query that gets something out of post meta is now changed because ACF is storing stuff in custom tables. So it, it's a really tricky balance there of, of needing to, to have back compat by default and then wanting to let people have sort of this opt in to, to a solution that works. So yeah, we've, we're trying to, we're trying to figure out a middle ground there between yeah, just going all out and saying, hey, ACF now uses custom tables. We put a bunch of indexes on it and it's just as performant. Um, but you're going to lose mm. a whole bunch of that default WordPress query, right? If you want to set meta key. Yeah. I think and, and there's two slightly two different things there, I think, that we're talking about that is you mentioned ACF extended doing things where at the moment, and and if you've looked in the post meta table or a meta table, I'm sure you've seen we store. Uh, a row which holds the field key and then the value but we also store another row which has the the acf internal id and like an underscore version of the field key so that's like two records for every piece of post meta um and that's something that i think yeah conrad you're here as well acf extended is changing we're looking to potentially do that for core at some point but then there's also like let's just get all of the meta values out of post meta or user meta or wherever and put them into a custom table. So you, the data is separate, as Nick says, is faster for, for querying because you're, you know, you're only looking at a table that store that has the data that you need rather than, you know, post meta could be massive depending on the site on the other plugins you're using. Um, especially if you're using like something like WooCommerce. So yeah, we're, we're looking at both those things, but there is that hook turn plugin that that does that it would all it would have to be 
in whatever way or shape we implemented that, it would have to be in an opt-in basis, right? So you'd have to be saying that this field group is storing this stuff on or anything to do with um, this custom post type. Let's st stick the ACF fields in a custom table and you, we'd need you to, uh, we'd need the user to explicitly want that because yeah, as Liam said, the backwards compatibility would be a nightmare. Um, yeah, just want to come back to Oliver. Sorry, I did say I was going to answer that next and I haven't, I'm back. Um, you've asked now that we can register blocks with block.json uh, and you've got more control over the Gutenberg settings. Um, yeah, will we add this level of functionality right to the field group? So yeah, the, this, we, we've definitely talked about, and we've mentioned here as well, like registering blocks within the UI. So you don't need to use PHP code and you potentially don't even need to go and write a blocks.json file. Um, so that's something we're looking at. And there is this, the, the thing with ACF blocks is at the moment is that you can, you have to say uh, this field group is to do with this block. And you could have many field groups to do with the same block, but it, it's always felt a bit strange in a way not to be able to just say this field group is a block. And you could then have your other controls around the what the you know the Gutenberg controls settings in the UI in the field group. Um, so I'm not sure how we're going to do that and sort of blend that those two things together, having it in the UI and having more you know control over the settings and the attributes. But yeah, it's something we're thinking about for sure. Where are we? Yeah, Akash, you've asked about removing stale data from the database. Yeah, you no longer need a field, you delete it altogether, but the actual values are still in your, uh, in your post meta table. Um, yeah, we, we've got a, a cleanup. We had somebody else talk about that today in support, actually. So that's on our on our minds at the moment. Um, but yeah, thanks for that. Where are we? What's the time? Oh, five minutes to go. Okay. Let me just, before I forget, I'll, I'll do a... I'll just... Anyone wants to vote in the poll quickly, I will um, share the results. Share results. Does everyone see that? Don't know what Zoom look, is looking like at the moment. Do you guys see the results of the poll? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks, John. Um, the Sam, you're in the chat, I think. Sam from from the DevRel team. You, are you doing a build mode live today, later on? Damon's nodding there. Damon's nodding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take over there, David. Yeah, yeah. There is a build mode. Yep. Nice. What's the yeah. th what's the topic today? Because I know there's a bit of a crossover in the audience, so it's always good to give uh, that a shout out. I think uh, we're chatting about design, so fonts, colors, um, just what goes into those choices, and uh, it's probably in relation to theme building. So, awesome. That's at uh, eleven a.m. Well, yeah, eleven a.m. Eastern, ten a.m. Central. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, two hours. Uh, it will be in about fifteen minutes. Oh, okay. Well, way quicker. I put the link in the chat if anyone wants to, yeah. to hop over and join those, those folks. Okay. How are we doing? Any more questions in the chat? Oh, totally disregarded the Q&A function. Maybe I'll just turn that off <laughs> next time. We, um, yeah, as I said, the uh, 6.1 6 .6 alpha one is available in, in your account. Uh, we'll have a free build up for the beta release in the next week or two. Um, yeah, play with it. Give us feedback on GitHub. There's a the issue that is open. It's in the release notes. Uh, yeah, give us any feedback. See, see if you can break it. You you did post the GitHub link, didn't you, as well? Uh, yeah, I will post it again, though. Uh, nice, there's, a, yeah. there's a couple of known issues that we know about. Um, 
that are listed there as well. So just, just bear those in mind. It's mostly around, you know, if you create five taxonomies with the same name, things might break. But uh, we'll, we'll wrap that up. That was, honestly, oh, so Comrade got this build earlier. It was the first thing he did. <laughs> the first thing he did was, I'm going to create eight things with the same name and see how badly it breaks. Very helpful. Thanks, Conrad. Right. Uh, yeah, no worries, Mike. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, we, we're really enjoying it. The team's enjoying like having people show up and chat and ask questions. And it, and it's nice to talk about what we're doing. So, yeah, I, I hope everyone's uh, finding it useful. And if you've got anything that you want discussed and as a topic, please suggest it. Like DM us on Twitter, or, you know, message us on Twitter, find us on everywhere else. and. Um, let us know and you can always yeah put a support ticket through on, on the site as well uh, and we will try and get some different themes but we're obviously going to be showcasing stuff as we go along and probably keeping the Q&A format as well which is quite nice so yeah all righty a couple more minutes but it's uh, probably a good place to call it yeah, thanks you have a good rest of your Friday and have a good weekend and see you in a couple of weeks at a slightly later time, but we'll, we'll, we'll message out. Cheers. Thanks everyone. See ya.